Hi, I am Masar Hussain and I am presenting you a VHDL demo which is based on an FPGA device. This tutorial will introduce you how to create and download the design of a counter created in VHDL to an FPGA port. In this tutorial, we are going to use Zilling's ISC Design Suit which is the synthesis, placement and simulation tool. To work on your own computers, a limited version of Zilling's ISC web pack can be downloaded for free from the Zilling's website. FPGA design process involves the same sequence of actions for every FPGA design software suit. That is, first to create a project, choose a name of your project, an FPGA device, in this case an access to board, a default language which is VHDL and then add a file to project both HDL description of the target device and test benches of behavioral simulation uh, do this behavioral simulation to see if your logic is working then you have to run synthesis uh, finally implementation and machine generation is the follow-up step now we can start from the first step by creating a project. Launch IEC Project Navigator. A screen like that will be displayed. Start a new project. In this dialog box, first choose the location of the project. We will name it to counter 4-bit because we are going to simulate the behavior of a 4-bit counter. Leave top level source type as HDL. After clicking next, select the target device, choose the family, for example Spartan 3, the package, access T as synthesis tool, iSIM as simulator, and VHDL as preferred language. Click next and finish. Now you can see source pen with project hierarchy and navigation window along with the editing area. Second step will be to define a VHDL module of a counter. We can take an example of a 4-bit counter. Right click near project hierarchy and select new source. Type the name of the entity of the VHDL code. After choosing the name, click next and specify the input output pins of the circuit. The 4-bit counter needs to have a reset and a clock as input and counter value as output. Select the checkbox for bus to get 4-bit output signal. Specify the most and see least significant bits. Click next and now you can see the complete port definition. Now click finish. In editor pane, you will be able to see the basic VGL packages at line 20 from the IEEE library that defines the keywords and operators for the language. Next is the entity containing the signals for 4-bit counter starting from line 32 and ends at line 36. Under the architecture, we need to declare an internal 4-bit signal that could increment with each clock cycle and later give the final counts to counter output. After line 41, the process with sensitivity list is initiated. The sensitivity list contains both reset and clock input. An if statement is declared, which depend on input reset. If reset equal to 1, then the internal 4-bit signal count should be reset to 0. Else, if there is a clock event and the clock is equal to 1, then increment the internal 4-bit signal count by 1. After the end of the process, the value of this internal 4-bit signal count should be passed to counter output. The signal assignment is visible in line 52. End the process and architecture and check in pen view if the implementation is selected. To check the syntax, right click on synthesize in process pen and select run. Select yes to save the project. Notice an error in the transcript pane, which says line 48 cannot have such operands in this context. The error is because of the operator plus in line 48. To fix this error, we need to include the library package 
IEEE standard logic unsigned which is the basic VHDL package from the IEEE library that defines the keywords and operators for the VHDL language. Rerun the synthesis and you will notice the green mark on synthesize which means no the syntax is correct. Next step will be to define another VHDL module which we call it a top level design with the name top design for counter. After clicking next now we can specify ports for this module. Declare two switches SW0 and SW1 as input, four LEDs as output that are LED1 as the significant bit, LED2, LED3 and LED4 as most significant bit. Here is the complete port definition. Now click finish. In the source pen, the set module will appear as shown. The component for the 4-bit is declared inside the architecture in which it is instantiated. The component declaration defines the ports of the lower level function. After the component declaration, we need to declare an internal 4-bit signal intermediate result to get the counter output value in the top design. In the port map, assign SW1 to reset signal and SW0 to clock, then link the counter output to intermediate result. After linking all the signals of top design to counter, now connect each bit of intermediate result to one of the four LEDs. Notice that after saving the file, counter 4 bit is now linked to top design in the project hierarchy. Now to check the syntax, right click on synthesis in process pen and select run. The green mark on synthesis shows that the syntax is correct. Before synthesizing the displayable counter, we need to assign signals to the physical inputs and outputs of an FPGA, which of course are switches for inputs and LEDs for output. A user constraint file commonly known as UCF file is required to fulfill this requirement. To download the UCF file for the FPGA board used in this tutorial, go to the web page of Nexus 2 Spartan 3 FPGA board and choose master UCF file for Nexus 2 1200. Download the file and save it in the same counter 4-bit folder. The file usually is in compressed zip format. After downloading the file, open the counter 4-bit folder and unzip the compressed UCF file. Now you can see the uncompressed UCF file in the folder hierarchy. To include the UCF file in the project, right click in the source pan and click on add source. From the pop-up window of counter 4-bit folder, now choose the unzip UCF file, press OK. Now you can see the UCF file listed under the same project hierarchy in the source pan. Select the UCF file and you will notice a change in process pan where now a selection is available that is user constraints. Open it and click on edit constraints. Actually, the UCF file is an ASCII file specifying constraints on the logical design. You can create this file and enter your constraints with any text editor. You need to set constraint for input signals, which in this case are clock and reset. For this example of a counter, we need to have two switches on FPGA board as clock and reset. So we can choose SW0 and SW1, remove hash before these lines and rename them same as the entity list of the top design. The output of the counter will be four LED outputs as shown in entity list. In UCF file, uncomment lines starting from 122 and replace them with the signal names in entity list from the top design. Now replace one by one the signal names in columns with a name from the entity list of the top design as shown. According to the entity list, LED0 could be replaced with LED01 LSP, LED1 with LED2, LED2 with LED3, LED3 with LED4 MSP. After specifying the correct pin assignment, next step is to generate the bit programming file. In process view, right click on implement design and select run. Select yes to save the project. Notice that there is an error indication in transcript pen indicating that the place and route is failed. The error is because the translation tries to see the SW0 as clock input which may violate the clock rule. To override this error, we need to include this line into the USCF file. 
as we are not using any dedicated clock in this design. Now that we know the cause of this error, copy this line and paste into UCF file. Rerun the implement design, which includes translate, map, place and route. Make sure that the top design is selected in the source pan. The green mark on translate, map and place route indicates that it completed successfully. Now run the process generate programming file. This will generate the actual configuration bits into top design.bit file that can be used to program this button 3 e port Nexus 2 to behave like the circuit which is a 4-bit counter. Now that we have the programming file we can program the Nexus 2 port using the tool provided by Digilind that is ADAPT. Connect the Nexus 2 port via USB cable to your computer or a laptop. When ADAPT is open and if Nexus 2 board is connected, it should recognize the FPGA board. See the upper right corner displaying the name of the board which is Nexus 2. Now select the top design for counter.bit file from the project folder. Click yes on the warning pop-up and program the FPGA by selecting this. Select yes on the warning pop-up again. Soon after, you will notice a change in lights on Nexus 2 FPGA board on the right. Now the 4-bit counter should be running on FPGA board. So let's test it. In the program, we assign SW0 for clock and SW1 for reset. These four LEDs will be the output of the 4-bit counter. Now if SW1 is switched, which acts as reset, the counter should reset to 0 and LEDs should not glow. Now if we switch SW0 which acts as clock, the counter starts counting with each rising edge. You can see that it can count all 16 possible values because it's 4 bit counter and then resets. This experiment verifies the VHDL code for 4-bit counter that we implemented during this tutorial.